are so specialized. You know, they have these movies in Britain where uh, at the beginning you have this very rich guy, and he's got the wife and five kids, and then he's got a butler and a maid. And the butler is very subservient, and the maid is very subservient. And then they go on this trip on a ship, and all of a sudden they get on the, uh, the boat capsizes, and they're on this desert island, and only the butler knows how to make a fire. Only the butler knows how to make a, a cabin. And this guy is, say, a banker or a, I don't know, a manufacturer of something, but he's just a CEO. He doesn't know how to make anything. He knows how to uh, run figures. And now all of a sudden the powers start shifting to the butler, and everyone says, yay, butler, he's self-sufficient. But look, if we were self-sufficient in that way, this earth, which now supports 7 billion people, might support 70,000 people? I don't know, but 99.9% .9 of us owe our very lives to trade. I mean, if we couldn't trade, we'd each have to be a jack of all trades. We'd have to make everything for ourselves, and most of us would die because we don't know how to do that. So, you know, I give economics lessons. You might be a chemist, you might be a refrigerator operator, you might be a biologist, and, and we all trade. I mean, you couldn't have a doctor being a doctor because he'd have to, if, if he had to be self-sufficient, because he'd have to think about dinner. What's he going to do for dinner? He couldn't focus on doctoring. And then the rest of us, when we need a doctor, we have to doctorize ourselves, if I can coin a phrase. So free trade is very important. And what's this so-called free trader Mitt Romney talking about? He wants to bomb China or something. Kill China, <laughs> and Obama's just as bad. He wants, he doesn't like outsourcing. Well, I outsourced on this shirt. I outsourced when I go to Walmart. I bought these shoes, I outsourced shoe purchasing. What's wrong with outsourcing? And then I have a very bad balance of trade with, uh, with Walmart. I keep buying their stuff and they never ask me to buy anything. So I have a very great uh, deficit with, with Walmart. Big deal. And they're both, each one of them is worse than the other, which is why I favor Gary Johnson. Because at least he's a libertarian. Whereas those two guys, if I had a pick, I'd probably pick Obama because I think that Mitt Romney is more likely to nuke China than, <laughs> I mean, you know, he's sort of crazy. At least Obama's had three and a half years to, to nuke people and he hasn't nuked anyone. Not that I favor his policies, but at least he, he's not as crazy in foreign policy seems to me, but I don't like either, and I hope Gary Johnson does well. Take the minimum wage law. There's something else that Ron Paul is 100% clear on, namely the minimum wage law is not a, a, a floor under wages, and the higher it rises, the more uh, wage people get. Rather, it's a barrier over which you have to jump to get a job, and the higher the barrier is, the harder it is to get a job. You know, we just had the Olympics. You know those guys, that they have springs in their legs. They jump like eight feet, eight two, eight three is the world record. Well, that's what the minimum wage law is like. To get a job, you, you don't have to jump eight feet. I, I, I sometimes give a lecture just on the minimum wage, and I go for a whole hour on the minimum wage. And what I try to illustrate with uh, is by jumping over something. And I usually try to jump over, well, this. I can now jump over this. When I, when I was young, jump over a chair like that. But now, you know, <laughs> getting old and feeble, I can jump over this. If I can make it, I want a round of applause. <laughs> Whoa! Oh! <laughs> That's what the minimum wage law is. It's you have to jump over. Now look, the unemployment rate, they lie about the unemployment rate. They say it's eight or nine or ten percent. The shadow open market uh, shadow statistics uh, more than 16%. But what's the rate of unemployment for black male teenagers? People who have a low productivity level. I'm not going to explain why it is. Maybe it's vestige of slavery. Maybe it's Jim Crow laws. Maybe it's inner city uh, education is not as good as it could be. Whatever the reason is, these young men, uh, another reason is they spend a lot of time in jail due to the drug war, but I'll get into that in a minute. Um, have a low productivity. Their unemployment rate ain't any 10%, it's more like 40 or 50%, and even that's an underestimate, because if you're no longer looking for a job, due to the magic of modern statistics, you're not counted as unemployed anymore. So the real unemployment rate of, of people with low productivity is astronomical. 
And Mitt Romney, oh yeah, I pay for the minimum wage, and Obama, we gotta raise it. Yeah, they're both. I mean, Mitt Romney is supposed to know something about economics. You know, I, I can see an excuse for Obama. He doesn't know economics, he's not business, whatever, but Mitt Romney, there's no excuse for him. That's just uh, pathetic. Whereas Ron Paul, uh, sound as a bell on this, uh, Ron Paul favors the gold standard. The gold standard doesn't allow people to create money because uh, you have to go out and, and look for it. So uh, there's a limit as to how much we're going to get. You're not going to have any Zimbabwe or Germany in 1923 with gold. And yet uh, the Milton Friedman and the boys, these people who are supposedly libertarians, they, they hate gold. And their big argument is, well, why dig it up here and, and bury it in Fort Knox? It's a waste. Well, I'm, I might as well say, well, why put a lock on a door? It's a waste. Because if no one stole, you wouldn't need any locks or fences. But we do have thieves out there, and they're the government. And what we need is, is a, a, a lock against them, and the lock against them is gold. It doesn't allow them to, to mess with the economy. So. That's the first third of the book, uh, uh, Ron Paul on Economics. And Ron Paul on Economics is just magnificent on everything, uh, economically speaking. Let me just mention one more thing. He was once asked about environmentalism. And he'd never written anything about that. And it was sort of, what is it, uh, extemporaneous. Someone shoved a microphone in his mouth, and kind of his mouth, but near his mouth, and said, well, what do you think about the environment? And he came out perfectly, free market environmentalism. The way to protect the environment is to have uh, property rights. And, and the reason we have problems is because we don't uphold property rights, like pollution is an invasion of property rights. It's a trespass of smoke particles on other people's property. Now they're talking about the elephants being killed for their tusks, which are worth a lot of money. Well, if they were privately owned, the people who own them would protect them against poachers. Yeah, we have cattle rustling, but by and large, you know, cattle are fine. Whereas buffalo, and I have to draw a picture of a, of a buffalo and a cow. Here's a cow. And I'm going to make him smiling because he never came with a million dollars of extinction. There he is, horns. There's his tail. And here's a buffalo, and we're going to make him frowning. And he gets horns and a body and four feet and a tail. And why did the buffalo almost go extinct? Because it was never privately owned. Now you have this crappy movie, Dances with Wolves. You know, the Indians were great, the white man was bad. No, 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 the Indians kill them too. The problem was, if you kill a buffalo, what's the cost of you killing a buffalo? What's the alternative or opportunity cost of killing a buffalo? Zero. You wouldn't have the buffalo anyway. He'd be in the next county. Whereas what's the cost of killing a cow that you own? Well, the cost of killing a cow today is having that cow tomorrow, which is a serious uh, loss. So you're only going to kill a cow uh, rationally or reasonably, whereas you, you kill a buffalo and just take its tongue. And the same with elephants. Would elephants be killed if they, uh, if they were privately owned? Yes. But it would cost a lot of money. And if you wanted to kill a male, old male elephant, a lower price. You want to kill a young female pregnant elephant? Oh, they're going to charge you an arm and a leg to kill one like that because they're very valuable. That's why the herds would survive. That's why cows never came extinct, and buffalo almost went extinct, and that's why um, elephants and rhino are now on the endangered species list. And Ron Paul just picked it up like that. I don't think he ever studied it. It's sort of instinctive with him that he's a free marketer, and he applies free markets and private property rights to everything.